to reach that uh, level of awareness where your hand the picking up of the chapati you know bringing the hand here i have touched those states at times when you are like totally in light totally that even my eyelids in those two three days that's when i was in that state it was falling after one or two minutes of can i be aware of every word <laughs> you know i doubt my consciousness it is something like a camera you switch it on it's on you switch it on it's off therefore we must learn this meditation so that we understand that mind is just a tool you do something mm. and first time you do it attentively okay for example you take a brush in the when you're a small kid and you put toothpaste and you brush your teeth mm. and it's the first time and everything you are paying full attention to taking the brush taking, and how it's tasting when you are kids it was like a thrilling thing to to you know put taste in our toothpaste in our mouth and that that jhag and but after after some time you are just taking the toothpaste you are just putting mm. you are you are not doing not doing it attentively at all mm. okay you are doing it mechanically mm. so an action which you started doing attentively which your body has learned mm. okay now you don't need to pay attention for example you don't need to pay attention how to walk now right but when you were small kid first time with your walk you know mm. you were like one step yeah. and then second step Okay, even when children learn how to smile in the beginning, mm. you know, it's like they have this thing and they, they little, you know, they they smile and they 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 smile more and they are. So actually, we are learning all this. Mm. So when you learn something and when it becomes mechanical, automatic, that is called habit. Okay, okay. Yeah. correct, no? Yeah. Uh, very clear. Mm. So that becomes habit. Now. i would say that nobody even the most enlightened person there are certain things some habits that will remain mm. for example there is a plate of food in front of me mm. you know and i am eating to reach that uh, level of awareness where your hand the picking up of the chapati mm. you know bringing the hand here i have Touch those states at times when you are like totally in light, totally. There is no I V U. That time there is that kind of awareness, mm. totally awareness. Like if I even my eyelids in those two three days, that's when I was in that state. It was falling after one or two minutes. Suppose I am talking to you, my eyelid is static. Mm. Okay, after one or two minutes, now see it keeps moving. Two minutes, it would go like this. Slowly, also, I don't know if I can do it. Mm. Something like. Okay. And I knew it's going down. Mm. And it, so definitely, there is a point, you know, in which you can have zero habit. But I feel that uh, to live in that state that kind of high awareness total awareness state okay you might touch it and come down from it mm. and like walking hand movement even this talking that i am doing mm. this also i have learned mm. i am speaking english language which i did know when i was a kid you know i learned cat Hat, rat, you know. Mm. So these are 
So language speaking is also habitual. Yeah. Okay. So can I be aware of every word? <laughs> you know, I doubt. One, that kind of awareness probably is not required. What is required is an awareness in which your mind is quiet and not in conflict with itself. That is the essential aspect of awareness, which means when I'm quiet, believe me, I'm 100% silent. But when you close your eyes, maybe you keep chattering. This is the difference. You know, so when I talk, I talk, when I'm quiet, I'm totally quiet. In other words, my consciousness, it is something like a camera. You switch it on, it's on, you switch it on, it's off. But you don't know how to switch off your camera. Exactly. So therefore, we must learn this meditation mm -hmm. so that we understand that mind is just a tool. Mm -hmm. But mind has become our master. In meditation, this is an old line mm -hmm. you might have heard also. If the mind is your master, okay, then you are a slave and most of humanity, we are all slaves. Mm. Even if you are not the slave of a king, you are the slave of your own mind. Mm. You see, because suppose I say, oh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm feeling like this and I want to do this. Actually, it's your mind that is telling you, okay. There might be some feeling there, there might be something there which is disturbing you, but Every time you get disturbed, you act on that disturbance. Mm. Now you are firstly you are disturbed, then you act on it. Are you increasing the disturbance or is it becoming less? Yeah. I am angry, yeah. I get up and slap him. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But now I am showing you the difference between a meditative mind and a non-meditator. The non-meditative mind, after anger, he does something and then later on he says, Oh, I'm so sorry, that I, didn't mean I got angry. Mm. So, in other words, the mind is always forcing us to act in whichever way it moves and then there is no control. I'm not saying that mind should be controlled. Mm. Uh, you should be aware. Okay. Now, a man who's aware, he might get irritated. Mm. People do get irritated, even after enlightenment, you can get irritated or this or that. Mm. I get irritated, you know. Mm. Okay. But I know how much that to play with that irritation. Mm. Sometimes if I get too irritated, I may do, I may do like this also, but I will never hit. Mm. You know. So in other words, I'm just using the effect to tell you something or to push you. Mm. But I am not getting caught in that effect. And that effect of irritation is not something which, oh, I got irritated and I need a break. No, that's, I know it's a part of my acting. Mm. I use it sometimes. Okay. So even sometimes I can use an anger also. Suppose, suppose, I'm just saying, suppose there's a wild animal in front of you and he's Wanting, he is getting uh, perked and he is in a violent mood. He wants to attack. Suppose I do, hey! hmm. will it run? Yeah. It will run. Yeah. So I have just showed him anger, <laughs> but I am not angry. Hmm. Okay. Now this is what I did when I was doing Krishna. You know, when I did the role of Krishna, there is a place in which I really get angry and tell uh, Shishupa hmm. that. Hello sir, you have said so many abuses, now it's 98. Now if it is the moment it comes to 100, your head is off your shoulder. And I really shout, and then I shouted, everybody including the cameraman and the director, they all shook up. They said, my God, you know. So if somebody else would have played that, they would have probably not you know, shown Krishna as showing anger. But this is what my point was. 
that what is Krishna? Krishna, if he is angry, is hundred percent angry, mm. but he is completely in command of that. You know this question of controlling. Mm. Okay, it's a wrong question. It means I am angry, and there is somebody else inside me. Mm. Actually, I am angry. Mm. Somebody else who will control. Who will control? Okay. If I am angry, then who will control? You know how we how we get into this question of how I am angry, and then I stop and. I realize I am angry, and then I think, no, I must control it. But by thinking I must control it, it is not getting controlled. Yeah. So this whole idea of controlling yourself is to fight against yourself, is to be in conflict with yourself, with no effect. By being in conflict with yourself, are you going to increase the anger? Definitely. Or decrease the anger? You are increasing conflict. You are fighting with yourself. You are going to get increase the. Anger. So all those people who try to control or suppress, we suppress also. Sometimes, suppose I am feeling angry, and you are the boss. Mm -hmm. So I go, "Nay sir, nay sir, I am not angry with you, sir. But you are angry, and you are feeling, you are upset also. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one thing we can do. That is what we call control. You will become ill. Mankind is ill. Mm -hmm. Not here. The West heavily control." We are sent to convent schools. You go to a convent school and you go to, you know, a normal uh, play school. And in a convent school, everything they will ask you to control. Even op like I remember in my class, by mistake, sometimes we go, like you know, yawn. Yeah. Don't do like that. Put your hand. Bad manners. This is that. So this whole thing about good manners and bad manners. The first question that I say when you tell somebody this is bad manners, that itself is bad manners. Now you can say without saying bad manners. If you open your mouth, okay, mm -hmm. some spit can come out. Give him some reason. Um, a mosquito can go in. This, this, this. So don't you think when you're opening your mouth and there are so many things, it's a good thing to when you do that. Mm -hmm. So now you have given some reason to the child. Rather than saying bad man, mm -hmm. so society doesn't teach us by using logic, reason. You see, because to make somebody understand logic, reason, this, that, it all takes a lot of effort, energy, time. So easy way is take a stick. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. I told you not. Don't do this. So huh, you got scared. See, okay, I got scared. After two minutes, when you leave, then I'm going to do that. You know, double, yeah. double. Yeah. So, have you have you achieved what you wanted? Have you made me good man or you made me still bad man? You know, still worse. Mm. So, all these jails that we have for criminals, okay, all these schools that we have for teaching children, you know, I really think. We need to change the whole system. Kindly subscribe and share our videos.